they imagine, Carla, if the schools were entirely in private hands and the result was 30 percent proficiency, we would never hear the end of the screaming and howling. But, oh, no, of course. You know, but but when it's and, and the screaming and howling would not be to say we need to make sure the private schools get more money. It would be. We got to shut these things down. They're they're terrible. They're seeking the profit motive instead of what's good for the kids. What whatever it is, we would hear all the propaganda. But then when it happens under the current system, it's like we either either don't talk about it or it's because they they don't have enough money. But they never have enough money. You could double or triple that budget, and the results just don't move. They just don't move. And here's the elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about. At some stage, it's about the individual, right? Like, how do you instill the desire to learn in people? And the problem with the way we're setting things up now, besides like training people to not think critically, and in fact, I saw a New York Times article in the past year that actually said, stop thinking critically, stop trying to like put pieces of the puzzle together for yourself, minion, right? And, um, and the question becomes, how do we instill the desire to learn in people? Because the schools are not doing that. And what we really need to do, I think, is to go back to the notions of play, of curiosity, of really trying to find what kids are interested in and then honing in on that. And we know that one size fit all does not, does not work for the children. 